Hi there, and um, welcome back to uh, the Rector Motorcycle Channel. Uh, sorry, we uh, we haven't been putting a lot of videos up on the three projects uh, that we are doing: the the trike, um, the GL1100, and the Norton. Um, it's been a bit of a crazy couple of months, really. Um, John's been really, my son John has been really busy with uh, uh, with other work and hasn't really had a chance to get up there and, and start working on um, replacing some of the parts for the pistons and everything else that you saw with the seized engine on the on the gull wing. Um, the trike, I did post some more stuff on the on the electric side. Uh, but that's as far as I got because um, around about a month ago uh, a friend of mine who unfortunately has been diagnosed with cancer and only has a few months to live has, uh, has got a bike that's been left with someone who needs to um, he was supposed to have finished it off for a, a, a friend of my friend's um, he was he built the frame and then it was supposed to have gone to this other guy for get the electrics done and a few other bits and pieces and unfortunately the other guy hadn't done it any of it any of the work. Um, Jim, my mate, got it back. Uh, asked me whether I could sort the electrics out and then um, he was diagnosed with uh, with cancer, unfortunately. So the bike's come over to me around about a month ago, uh, Bandit, 1200 Bandit, hardtail, ch hardtail chop, and um, I'm trying to sort it out for him uh, before he passes away, really. Very sad story, not trying to get any sympathy off anyone, uh, I'm just trying to explain why I haven't really had a chance to put any, any videos or vlogs on to do with anything else but I wanted to um, do this video uh, for the bearings on the Norton because there's quite a few um, I think I explained in the last in the last video um, that with the navigator and the Jubilee uh, the bearings the inner radius of the bearings need cutting uh, grinding down inside or if you don't do that when they actually uh, mate up to the crankshaft you'll have a problem actually um, being able to close the casings up now <clears throat> I have bought two bearings um, for the navigator but unfortunately um, one of the bearings which uh, I sent some photos to Norton Owners Club who have been so helpful with this Andy and, um, and the rest of the guys there and um, it's uh, the drive side bearing um, we had an email from Norton Owners Club <coughs> explaining um, the bearing that's actually being sold as the, the the crank main bearing for the drive side um, these days doesn't last very long at all at about 5,000 miles um, this is due to um, the debris that might get produced small amounts of debris that might get produced while a, a, an engine is turning over especially the, the the old British bikes as well um, the, the debris will not actually clear itself from the drive side bearing and ends up wearing the bearing out a lot quicker than what it should do and I've done this video basically to show you that bearing that I've bought and a bearing which I've actually bought Although it's second hand, it's, it's an unused bearing 
um, it's just been sat around in someone's garage or something for, for ages which I actually received today <coughs> um, which is in the old style i.e. the way the bearing should be um, and I, I will have to get it ground down on the inner radius but at least it's the original type of bearing not the bearing that's being sold uh, on some uh, sites now um, I think this is quite important hence the reason why I'm doing this video so I'll get the bearings out and then we can I'll show you what I mean okay so this is the uh, this is the time inside bearing this is the part number 20727 um, I've had a couple of guys from Norton Owners Club to have a look at this and it does look like the uh, the inner race has been ground down as we were talking uh, in the last video that the these bearings, the Norton Dominators um, the Norton Dominators don't need the grinding down they, you can put these bearings straight into the Norton Dominators <clears throat> but on the 350 and the 250 lightweights uh, you cannot do that uh, they have to have this uh, this chamfer um, a lot deeper so that the, when the crank goes in to the to the bearing um, it sits a little bit a lot closer to the to the crankshaft um, and so that you can actually close the the uh, the casings of the engine casings up if you don't do that you can't close the bearings you can't close the casings together um, and if you try you could end up damaging the casings so that is the uh, the timer side one which is fine um, however the drive side this is where it starts getting a bit complicated so originally when I took the bearing off this is a little bit damaged from when I pulled it off but um, the original main bearing on the drive side that came off you've got the inner race and you've got the actual um, roller bearings on the outside and they're actually fixed to the inner race as you can see yeah um, and this is how they're supposed to be bearing which I bought um, which is the, the new style which is this model number 20726 if you look at this the actual rollers themselves are actually held in by the outer race of the bearing and the inner race is separate so as you can see this is the the difference between the two um, now apparently from what Norton Owners Club are saying is that because of this and because you've got the the, um, the screen on, on, on the rollers on the inside on both sides um, any debris that's produced while the bearing is being spun round while the cranks go in and it's spinning round the debris doesn't clear from the crank cases properly and so wears the bearing down a lot quicker than what it should do and uh, apparently it's normally around about 5,000 miles and then you have to replace the, the main bearing again so I'm low to actually put this one in this cost 33 35 pound this bearing um, but I'm low to put it in only for the fact that and the actual radiuses have been ground down on the inside as well they've been cut out so that we've got got the actual uh, uh, so it'll fit in the crank properly all the dimensions are, are, are right and everything um, but unfortunately this is the uh, 
NGA306E um, and yes it'll work but unfortunately it might only get you 5,000 miles down the road so <clears throat> I was on eBay the other week or last week sorry and uh, just by pure chance came across this particular bearing the dimensions and stuff look right however if you look at this and I know it's got this uh, let me just get this string off this has the rollers on the inside so you've you've actually got a recess that the rollers sit into oh, you can actually see that there's a there's a recess on the inside so when you actually pop the uh, the racing and this is all held in by the inner the inner race the inner radius sorry and you drop that we'll get it in here we go um now there's no actual colours on the inside of this and so the, the debris gets cleared properly you can tell if the bearings knackered if you push hard and spin there'll be a you know you can feel any grinding on it this this bearing is really good it's, there's, there's nothing actually wrong with it it has got a few marks on it but it's 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 fine um, and when you actually look at the uh, this and the original or this and the bearing that's that's come through from one of the other suppliers the bearing is exactly the same not a problem the number on this is uh, MRJA30 uh, it's made in England doesn't give you the actual manufacturer I don't think R&M um, but the actual bearing itself is exactly the same it's the same thickness I've measured it all and everything it's exactly the same except that the the whole thing comes you've just got the outer race whereas this one it's just got the inner race and that's the difference and that's where um, it falls down um, and the and the bearings only last for so long I'm only going on the information that no one owners could give me but the thing is these guys actually you know are working on Norton's all the time and know and know their stuff so so I'm hoping that this one is going to go in um, looking at the inside though the the actual inner radius will need grinding this will fit straight into a dominator but it's not going to fit into a navigator without the inner radius ground down slightly it's very difficult to show you really on a um, on the video as to the radius of each one but all I can do is sort of show you them and you can see for yourself that the radiuses are different and I'm gonna to have to get uh, an engineer to actually just grind this down it's hardened steel it can't just be you know you can't just do it with a, a file or anything like that it has to be machined so I'm hoping to get this done and then I can actually put the uh, the main bearings back in 
um, and take it from there. The other thing which I've found, um, which I've, I've, I'll put some pictures on as well, um, coming up should be coming up in a minute, um, is the, the the grub screw, which you can um, take out to clear the sump in actually inside the crank. Um, some of the or oh, in the manuals some of the older cranks i think it is have got two little grub screws so you'll see from the photos whereas the, the 350 crank that i have only has one screw now apparently norton when they built these um this little grub screw goes in it's you can take it out and you can clean all the the sump out and clean all the passageways and everything in the crank so that you you don't seize the engine up um, but Norton when they put these grub screws in um, they stamp them so that so that you can't actually so they can't come out basically so you know you, your crankshafts going round and round and round really fast um, so that this little grub screw cannot undo itself and come out so the only way you can get them out is by drilling them um, and then uh, once they're drilled out as long as you don't um, damage the thread and uh, no one owns a club do sell the uh, and, and other suppliers do as well they sell a little grub screw that you put back in now the crankshaft that I have here um, and bring the picture up again on the video um, it looks like someone's tried to put this grub screw in um, whoever it was who said that they'd rebuilt the engine but they hadn't uh, in the past uh, and it's only maybe two thirds of the way in it's still proud of the actual um, surface of the crank whereas if you look at the old 250 crankshaft which I've, I've got a picture of up on there this crankshaft's knackered I've, um, uh, it came with the 250 I bought uh, as a spare crank uh, but it's it's mashed and it, it needs a lot of weight. it needs to just go in the bin uh, but when you look at the grub screw that's actually in that crank it's recessed into the into the uh, into the hole where it sits um, maybe a millimeter or so actually into the crank so it does make me wonder um, that either someone's put a grub screw in that doesn't fit because I can't get it out. I've 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 tried to just um, heat it up a bit and 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 get it unscrewed and get it out so I can I can put the proper one in. It doesn't want to move. It's just it. I think the brass and it's it's just breaking. So I'm going to end up having to drill that out. Uh, but it's something to uh, to remember as well. Um, apart from that, uh, thank you very much for still watching and um, I know it's been a little bit laborious waiting for, for me to send some other videos um, out on, onto YouTube but please stay in touch, please uh, bear with us and ride safe, be safe. Lockdown in the UK seems to be uh, coming soon. Um, the unlockdown, I should say. And uh, hopefully we'll all be back. Back to normal. Very shortly. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>